The aquarium controller market is getting more and more crowded with more players bringing on new features and trying to grab that market share. I'm here looking at the new Hydros XP8, which is a standalone controller or power strip with tons of expansion capabilities and safety as well. Very modular. This is a Hydros control on its own. So you could start with just the XP8. However, it does get better when you expand that capability and add another control on there and get those inputs that you need to make more advanced decisions on there. So how do I connect to this? Uh, just through the Hydros app. It is, it is a Hydros control, so just like any other Hydros controls, you download the app and add it as a normal controller and select what kind it is. So this runs Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, internet? So it runs a little bit of everything. So we do have a Bluetooth read-only option, but yes, of course it runs over internet. However, we're not cloud-based, so we all hold all of our information locally on here with an AWS cloud backup. So for example, if the internet goes out, this device communicates over Wi-Fi. Okay. If Wi-Fi goes out, this device communicates over a wired connection. And if the wired connection is severed, this is still a control device, so all commands and schedules are still held internally on it. Okay, so it doesn't crash or become stupid just because it's offline. No, sir, not, not, not at all. But we, we didn't want to end there. We wanted to have that wired connection, not only for the connectivity, but for data transfer and, and other issues we may run into. So, you know, we talked a little bit about drive ports too. You know, this opens up so much possibility. We have onboard 12 volt power onto here, okay. but you'll notice my drive ports are full on this device because I have a fan and I have a, an ATO pump on there. But up next, I want to add a dosing pump. Okay. I don't need to have another, another controller to have, to have drive ports. We have the adapter that plugs straight into here and you can plug a doser straight into there. To or, this plug, to, to that plug for that plug, and our dosers are $60. So this can drive multiple dosers off one plug? Eight dosers, eight dosers. Eight. So you can even da daisy chain our dosers. However, at that time, they are dumb dosers, so they are powered at the same time. So you can daisy chain them, okay. but they dose the same amount at the same time. But we can spread the dosers out to different outputs and have them schedule the same way drive ports do. Okay. So no inputs on this as a standalone box? No, no inputs on that. It gets better when you add the other control and create a Hydros collective. So I could start with this if I wanted or add this onto another collective that I already had. Exactly. But if I'm just using this, I'm really underutilizing what this can do. Exactly, you're limiting yourself. And a lot of people, I know some people that have started with this, but they see the benefit of getting that Hydros collective and getting those inputs from everything. And it just makes it super safe and decision making comes really quick. Sure. And a lot of us with decision making, we like to DIY stuff. You were showing me this fan, yeah. which is a standard CPU cooling fan yep. that's plugged into a dry port just by connecting some wire. For these small devices, we don't have to have a whole 120 volt outlet for a tiny little CPU fan. Okay. We can do 12 volt power directly on there. The micro ATO pump is also right drive port here. driven. So can I use any pump with this? or does that Absolutely, you can use any ATO pump you want. This one is nice because it's small form factor and it goes on the drive port, sure. but this output and this output act exactly the same. So you could put a nice large pump on there if you have a big system and it acts exactly the same in the ATO output profile. Something is going to go wrong at some point with yeah. your tank. Hopefully it's something minor. You have some niche features built in to alert me in many ways if something does go wrong. Yeah, so we have multiple layers of, of alerts. So we have red alerts. At a red alert, we have an audio and visual alert. The, all the devices will turn red and have a very loud beeping to them. Right. We really want to know when there's a red alert. But for small things, you know, you don't really don't have to know that. So we also have orange alerts. At orange, you're also going to get a push notification and an email. Okay. And we have a yellow alert, which is just an email. And if you don't want any, we have a none option too. So you don't have to get any alerts. And one of the control things you were talking to me about was I can set a schedule, so if I only want my heater to be allowed to heat for 12 hours a day, yep. I can set that in the software. Easily. You can enable advanced settings, and then you can tell it how long the minimum on time, the minimum off time, the maximum on time, and the maximum off time, so you can get it really customized. For example, um, I do have a calcium reactor at home, but I also kind of heavily rely on Calquasar. I love the pH benefits and the precipitating phosphates, so I only allow my ATO to kick on twice per day. It only attempts to go on twice per day because I run my calc washer on a peristaltic pump right. and I want that to replace it. But say I have my ATO, my water level satiated, but my alkalinity, I have an alkatronic and my alkalinity is not, is not quite to where it needs to be. At that point, well, we know calc washer is like, okay, don't do that. At that point, we can do calcium reactor to satiate the needs. And say even it gets down lower to where, you know, with the calcium reactor and calc washer, we want to keep that stable. That's not to raise and that's not to lower right. alkalinity level. But say it does drop down, I had a heavy consumption day. 
we can hook up a doser to give it a little kick when it gets down there. So we can give it a little kick, but it, the doser is only allowed to come on when it gets to that low point. Okay. And we have dynamic dosing. So if we have inputs from a testing machine, say an Alcatronic or a Mastertronic, we can take those inputs and have a dynamic dosing schedule based on it. And you can start as simple as you want, as complex as you want, you can add on as you get more comfortable or your budget expands. Our starter kits start at $199 and come with the controller, it comes with the Wi-Fi power strip, it comes with a temperature sensor, and obviously the power supply for that. And later on, if you decide to expand out, you get a command bus cable and the terminators, which are right here and you can expand out and you don't have to get that starter kit. So we offer the controller only starting at $160. Okay, so, so you have many places to start and many places to expand with this thing. A lot of places to start, a lot of places to expand because all of our devices are controls. You can start with any of them and expand out from there. Mm -hmm.